Ready. The weather's gotten warmer and my hair is up in a ponytail. One of the fam fav my favorite parts about being up north is that my hair didn't frizz out and I could leave it down. Here it turns off warm and I start sweating and hair has to go up in a ponytail. Okay, um, I want to give you a couple of things that will help you get to 5D. In 5D, nobody does things repetitiously. Okay, everything flows moment to moment and something different is being done by each uh, creator, each entity all the time. So in order to already start that process, you need to shake up your lives. So whatever you're doing repetitiously, try to not do it that way anymore. Uh, I know you've got to get up and go to work at the same time, but try to do different things when you come home from work do it in a different way a different manner anything you could do to shake it up and roll different do things that you wouldn't normally do um, start yoga join a dance class um, um, volunteer at the SPCA read books for children in the library anything that you can do to change your schedule so there is the least amount of schedule possible the more that you can lose the schedule and go into the now and follow what it feels like the right thing to do is in the now, that's even better. But in order to go from a strict schedule, which most of us have, um, then the first thing you do is become as unscheduled as you can with the life that you have. Uh, one of the things that I would suggest is lose the clocks and the watches. So you've got to have clocks and watches to go to work. After that, take them off. Don't look at them. Eat when you feel like it. Uh, go to sleep when it feels right. Try to start going with your instincts. And do not do the same things all the time. Don't have a set schedule to do this or that or this, except for where you cannot change it. The other thing is get out of as many of the systems as you possibly can. If you can get out, uh, in even to whatever degree you can get out of them. Uh, do as much bartering as you can to get out of the money system. Anything that you can do to get out of the monetary system, because as long as you're using it, they are attached to you and they are taking some of your energy. It's just the way it works. Now, I realize that a lot of you can't get out of it altogether, but try to get out of it as much as you can. Try to you know, get out from under the credit cards and the debt of any kind. Try to... Um, save your money and buy stuff as you've got the money rather than accrue debt because each one of those debts is you attached to the gecko system. Uh, try to use natural cures. Um, trade with local people. Like I said, barter as much as you possibly can. Start learning to do things on your own uh, instead of doing things like you normally would do something simple like changing the oil in your car. Uh, instead of taking that and having somebody else do it for you, learn to do it yourself. Um, if there's, uh, if you don't know how to sew, men and women, if you get a rip or you lose a button, learn how to do that yourself. Anything that you can learn to do on your own rather than having somebody else do it or a system you can get out of. If you can homeschool your kids at all, if at all possible, then get them out of that um, and start teaching your kids from the standpoint that they are creator gods this is a game and they can create anything they want to they don't have to go through you know school to get a job to get what they want they can create it from a god like standpoint so anything along those lines that you can get out of the systems that are put in place as far as the pigeon side get out of the side that you have to pray or you have to do rituals or you have to call on an outside being to assist you on doing anything, get rid of all of that. So start making a list in your life of anything that is like either side, gecko or pigeon, and anything that you can get out of it as much as possible. Write down your day-to-day -day life. I think you'll find out that you do a lot more via a scheduled, in a scheduled manner than you think you do. So try to get rid of those and change them up as much, much, much as possible, okay? The other thing that Tara came up with, we were talking about eating and how you eat. So since we don't want to be attached to anything and calling somebody 
a meat eater or a vegan or a vegetarian. Those are all um, titles that you can get attached to. So what she came up with, and I dearly love it, is vibrational eating. So that what we found is that there are several different beings inside of each person. There's the physical body that needs certain things. And then there's the emotional body that tends to eat a different way. There's a, a body that eats according to what society says is the right way to eat. And you have to deal with all of those different aspects of yourself when you're eating. So in the moment, the first one that I always talk to is my body. That's the only reason I do eat. And she's the only one that I'm concerned about. So I do reflexology, which you can look that up on the internet and see how that works. And I ask her all the time what she needs or what she wants at any given moment. And that's what I give her. I don't think of it in the future. I think of it every moment. So, and then whenever I'm fixing the food or getting ready to eat the food, I'm very grateful to all of the beings that gave up their lives for me to eat the food, uh, plants and animals. And I'm also very grateful for whoever was involved in getting the food to me, of growing it, of collecting it, of raising it, whatever, whatever it is. I'm grateful to the truck drivers that bring it to me, the people that put it on the shelves, the people who built the stores where they put it on the shelves. You see where I'm going with this? There's a lot of people involved in getting you the food that you can be grateful for. Very, very important that you give credit where credit's due, that you don't take for granted the fact that you go to the grocery store and it's easy. You can also be very grateful for the job that you have to get you the money that you can buy the food. You see where I'm going. Being very grateful about that food. But I don't get caught up in uh, labels and I can eat some really bizarre stuff. I will not eat uh, refined sugar or uh, a lot of the salts. I die salts I do not do. And I, I will never do them. We've had a talk, though, my body and I. And unless it's an emergency and it's the only way I can get something that my body needs, I stay away from anything that has any kind of processing at all. Other than that, um, I will avoid those things right there and then go through and ask my body what she needs. And I love Tara's uh, take on it. And I love, I am a vibrational eater. I think I'm going to make a t-shirt with that. That if we're going to be named, if I'm going to be tagged anything, that that's what I want to be tagged as. I eat vibrationally according to what my physical body wants. And I pretty much soothe everybody else. So if I'm eating a very bizarre thing and society looks at me strangely, I just soothe that aspect of myself. The part of me that's been dieting for decades, I soothe that aspect of myself and explain that this food is for this physical body. It's not for the rest of it. Um, now, some of you enjoy cooking and eating food, so you have a different perspective that you'll be having fun in that regard. Um, I do enjoy preparing food for others, which I do use that as a happier and happier moment. But for me personally, um, I eat food vibrationally for this physical body so she can have exactly what she needs in any given moment which can be rather bizarre at times, uh, especially over the last month because I've had to increase my intake period and uh, massively in the protein arena. Uh, it's really good to use those, those pH strips that you can buy online. It's really cheap, and you can use them with your saliva and see where your pH lands. pH in 7.33 is usually where you want to stay. Uh, seven is what it shows on those little strips, and that's close enough. But in my case, with the energy work I was doing, I needed higher protein, which makes me, made me uh, a point more acidic, which worked out beautifully. But uh, for me, most bodies, not everybody, but most bodies under most circumstances, it's best to stay at that seven point range. And if you can't tell what your body is telling you as well, that's a good way of keeping... Um, yourself on track on eating. But I would really encourage you to stay away from um, titles and where you stay because in this process of moving up through 4D really rapidly, you might, your body, in order to keep up, might need some really bizarre things. So I would just encourage you to consider 
Uh, now me, of course, I'm going to be a vibrational eater as long as I eat. And then I'm going to go directly into sun gazing and uh, breathing. Uh, breatharianism, which is, of course, a title. Eventually, all of those will drop away. Okay? All right, that's it for this one. Love you guys so much, and I'll talk to you later. Bye now.